So you want to get tactical, do you? You think you're smart, don't you? Want to shape the general election result to get something closer to what you want than would otherwise be the case if you'd voted for your first option, do you? Fair enough. Tactical voting looks set to play a big part at this election, mainly because of Brexit. The UK is divided into 650 constituencies where candidates from different parties stand. Here, we use the first past the post system where the local candidate that receives the most votes in a constituency becomes an MP. And the party who wins the most MPs forms a government. It's a winner takes all system. You get one vote, one result in the constituency you vote in. No second preferences or anything like that. So let's say then that you're a Brexit party supporter, but the seat that you're in is held by the Conservatives and the Brexit party, even with your vote, isn't likely to win. You've got a choice. Either you vote Brexit party, you take votes off the Tories and potentially allow another party like Labour or the Lib Dems to win in that seat. Or you could swallow your pride, vote Conservative in order to get an MP who is closer to your own view on Brexit. This is partly why the Brexit leader, Nigel Farage, has decided not to put Brexit party candidates in 317 seats held by the Tories in order to try not to split the vote. The Brexit party will not contest the 317 seats the Conservatives won at the last election. What I do understand fully is that if we do field 600 candidates, there will be a hung parliament. I think that is by far the most likely outcome which I think is something that very few people really want. I weighed up Boris's promises, and is he going to stick to them, against, against the threat, particularly in the South and the Southwest, that we let in a lot of Remainer Liberal Democrat MPs. Let's say then that you're a Liberal Democrat supporter. You want a chance at stopping Brexit. It would be great, you think, to have a Lib Dem government, but to be honest, it looks unlikely. So in order to get closer to the thing you want, you decide to vote for Labour, who are offering a second referendum, safe in the knowledge that they stand a better chance of winning in your constituency. You, my friend, have just voted tactically. But not everyone thinks you're being all that clever. Now, in this election, obviously, we have the horrendous first-past-the-post system, uh, but we've also got this plethora of, of tactical voting websites offering often different advice, using different data, different spreadsheets. I don't think it's helpful at all. I think it's confusing to the voters. What we've been doing with the Unite to Remain initiative is try to do some tactical campaigning. You know, the system is broken. At the moment, people's votes are not reflected in the number of MPs. So what we've done is work with uh, Plaid Cymru and the Lib Dems, who are also strongly Remain parties to try to make sure that we get something that represents more of the Remain majority that's in the country in Parliament by standing at one united Remain candidate in, in these 60 seats. Uh -huh. And that's something that we've done. And it's, it's clear to the voters there what the parties are doing. It's honest, it's upfront, it's open. Um, some of the things in the spreadsheets and these tactical voting sites are very opaque and I don't mm. think that's helpful. Sean hates it. And a lot of the smaller parties do. They feel it disadvantages them and stops people casting their vote for who they really want. Some of these smaller parties want to change the voting system from first past the post to proportional representation, which they feel gives them a better chance and gives your vote more meaning. Nevertheless, the system is what it is for now. And like any system, is there to be potentially gamed. Happy voting.